Hello, this is Gallagher Fluid Seals. This video begins our series on the history and science of DuPont Calres, also known as perfluoroelastomers or FFKM. Today's agenda will cover the language of rubbers, plastics, and elastomers, what elastomers are, a history of elastomers, the term plastics, important characteristics to consider, and different types of elastomer test methods. Elastomers are long chain polymers made by polymerizing a monomer. Because the molecules can rotate at the carbon atom, which are held by single bonds, the chains can get thoroughly entangled. And since the intermolecular forces in this state are not strong, the polymer is like a very viscous liquid. At room temperature, elastomers usually have not reached a crystalline state and stay in the elastic form. Throughout this video, you'll hear the term plastics. This is a generic way of describing a synthetic material made from a wide range of organic polymers. Organic polymers are a man-made substance that is formulated using polymer chains to create what we commonly refer to as plastics. Like elastomers, plastics such as nylon are polymerized from a monomer. Plastics that are cross-linked have a high glass transition temperature and thus are easily injection molded. However, some plastics have a more linear densely packed and rigid molecular chain. These linear plastics have a higher hardness and modulus than most elastomers. In general, plastics tend to conform to surfaces much less regularly than elastomers and require higher forces to create a seal. The biggest problem with using linear plastics as a seal is the tendency to creep under compression or tension. This will result in eventual leakage of the gasket or seal unless some provision is made for energizing seal surfaces. Before we dive into CalRes and FFKM, let's go over some history of how elastomers came to be. The earliest attempts to make synthetic rubbers used butadiene as the monomer. This was polymerized, but like natural rubber, it had no resistance to oils and solvents, since it was nonpolar by nature. Attempts to introduce polarity to the butadiene chain resulted in the first two commercial elastomers with moderate oil resistance, neoprene and nitrile elastomers. This was achieved in the case of neoprene, polychloroprene, by chlorine addition. The added polarity in this case gave moderate oil resistance. The addition of acrylonitrile to butadiene as the copolymer gave the first truly oil resistance elastomer. The higher the polar acrylonitrile content, the more oil or heat resistance was achieved with some sacrifice in low temperature properties. This elastomer was first produced as Buna N, now known as nitrile or NBR. The principle of backbone molecular chain protection has not changed with CalRes, except that fluorine is used as a polar agent. The principle of backbone molecular chain protection is the process of surrounding the carbon backbone with a highly resistant shield, and in this case, that means surrounding it with fluorine. This leads to a much higher degree of heat and fluid resistance than any other elastomer. Now, let's dive into some characteristics of CalRes that make it unique. With the development of CalRes, the creep and compliance problems associated with Teflon were solved due to the elastomeric properties of FFKM. Most conventional elastomers have a hardness on the Shore A or IRHD durometer scale running from 20 to 100. To measure greater than 100 Shore A hardness, Shore D scale is used. The Shore D instrument has a penetrator, not an indenter, and runs a scale from 40 to 90. Something to note, all plastics are at the high end of the Shore D range, whereas CalRes compounds range from 65 to 95 Shore A, as do most conventional elastomers. Since hardness is similar to compression modulus, the softer the material, the more it conforms, and the lower the compressive force is required for it to reach a given deformation. Elastomers resist creep or permanent compression set due to their cross-linked structure, which prevents the molecular chains from tearing apart under stress. Their compliant and flexible nature makes fitting and conforming to irregular surfaces easy. Plastics, like Teflon, tend to easily absorb particulate matter into their surfaces. Under dynamic movement, these surfaces can abrade or fret the surface of the metal mating part, causing leakage. Elastomers, having lower contact areas as seals in most designs, also tend to shed particulate matter. 
Thus, they do not have the fretting problems of Teflon. This helps maximize the surface life of mechanical seals. Calrez parts are manufactured in much of the same way as any other rubber part, except that the degree of difficulty in each stage is much greater. During formulation, the appropriate ratio of compound ingredients is determined to optimize properties of the final compound. Compounding is when the various ingredients are weighed out according to a defined recipe, then mixed to obtain good dispersion, generally on a two-roll mill. The raw stock is then formed into preformed blanks, such as extruded tubing, rod stock, or calendared sheets, for final molding into standard and custom parts. Although some cross-linking takes place in the mold, Calrez is primarily cross-linked during post-cure. Gallagher often gets asked about uncured FFKM parts. You should know, Calrez does not sell uncured FFKM parts. Next, we are going to discuss some important characteristics of all elastomeric sealing devices, such as hardness, tensile strength, elongation, compression set, glass transition temperature, brittle point, permeation rate, and volume swell. We will elaborate on how each of these characteristics is measured. So, you may be wondering how hardness is measured. As mentioned previously, two test machines are generally used to measure hardness, short A and IRHD. Since the indenters are different at each machine, slightly different results are obtained, although the ratings are roughly comparable. O-rings, or more commonly, pellets and slabs can be tested, although different readings will result from the various sample shapes. Hardness is often misinterpreted for modulus. For example, an elastomer with any set hardness value can generally be formulated to a number of different moduli. Generally, the higher the hardness, the better the extrusion resistance of the sealing material. In most cases, selecting a 70 Shore A hardness compound does not guarantee the best sealing properties. It is suggested that a grade of Calrez, that the proper combination of hardness, chemical resistance, and properties be selected. Tensile strength is measured using dumbbell or o-ring test pieces. It can be used as an indicator of the rate of degradation when samples are aged in a standard hot air test or specific chemical environment. Elongation is measured on dumbbells or o-rings. Loss of elongation after aging is a good indicator of degradation. Compression set resistance, although a good quality control test, does not indicate long-term sealing ability. This test is currently operated on pellets and O-rings. Times and temperatures for standard ASTM, British Standard, or other standard tests are for short durations of 24, 70, or 168 hours. Consequently, these tests do not take long-term aging of the elastomer into account. Temperatures are chosen to reflect upper surface temperatures of this elastomer type. This test can also be run in various media, other than air. Because of its relatively high fluorine content, thermal expansion occurs at higher rates with Calrez compounds than most other elastomers. This means that at extremely high temperatures, some changes or modifications in the sealing cavity design may be necessary to accommodate the increased elastomer volume. Glass transition temperature, referred to as TG, is the temperature at which elastomers pass from a rubber-like to a plastic-like state. At the glass transition temperature, materials will not easily move across a groove under low pressure to affect a seal. However, TG does not imply tendency of the material to break due to impact, motion, or pressure. Other methods of low temperature rating are Clash-Berg stiffness, TR10, or temperature retraction and the Gaiman torsional stiffness. Most elastomers do not fail because they have a high glass transition temperature. They typically fail through an inadequate groove design. This occurs when thermal shrinkage and higher compression set requirements of elastomers are not taken into account. Glass transition temperature for Calrez is in the 32 to 42 degree Fahrenheit range. Brittle point essentially measures the temperature at which a number of test samples suffer breakage. This is an indicator, but does not necessarily measure the lowest temperature at which the elastomer can be used. Tests and use in the field have demonstrated that Calrez 4079 parts can seal below their brittle point of negative 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Permeation rate depends on the molecular weight of the media. 
pressure of the fluid or gas, temperature, and thickness of the specimen. The higher the molecular weight of the media, the lower the permeation. The thicker the specimen, the lower the permeation. The higher the temperature, the greater the permeation. Volume swell is perhaps the most important property measured with reference to seal design. Obviously, if an elastomer swells to a greater volume than the cavity containing it, extrusion and seal failure can result. This generally occurs when volume swell exceeds 15%. Excessive swell can indicate degradation of the elastomer from contact with the media and nearly always results in a loss of seal force. Softening associated with swell also makes the elastomer more susceptible to pressure extrusion. Since CalRes is chemically resistant in nearly all media, this family of compounds are the universal solution to most swell problems of conventional elastomers. Swell and weight change are measured after immersion for defined periods of time and temperature. Change in properties of an elastomer due to exposure to higher temperatures or specific chemical environments, or any combination thereof, is very important for estimating the long-term service life of a seal. Since CalRes is often used to replace inadequate sealing materials that fail prematurely, a comprehensive database of the effects of both heat and chemicals on CalRes has been compiled. Properties measured in addition to volume swell can include change of tensile strength, elongation at break, modulus, and hardness. During the final analysis, visual inspections for degradation, such as blistering, are also performed. Under correct storage conditions, like those for Viton, shelf life for CalRes can be expected to exceed 25 years. Thanks for watching our introductory video to CalRes FFKM and elastomers. Stay tuned for the next video in our series, where we will discuss a comparison of conventional elastomers versus CalRes.